Harry Potter and the world of Hogwarts is fascinating for so many people. A great way to practice your database design skills is to create something from the real world, or in this case, the wizarding world. In this video, we will create a database design that could be used to represent the world of Harry Potter. We'll look at Hogwarts students, teachers, houses, Quidditch, and much more. Welcome to the Database Star YouTube channel, the place for developers looking to improve their database and SQL skills. Let's get started. Here's a blank screen in Lucidchart, my preferred tool for creating ERDs. There are many other tools you can use, even pen and paper. Let's start with representing a student, such as Harry, Ron, and Hermione. We'll drag a table from the sidebar onto the diagram and call it student. What do we want to capture for a student? First, we need a primary key to identify them. We'll use a simple ID for now. We also want to capture a first name and a last name, so let's add that. What about their house, such as Gryffindor or Slytherin? We can add a field for their house here. There's a better way to capture the houses, which we'll see later in this video. We may also want to capture the year they enrolled as a student. This is so we can see the students that are in the same year. There are many other things we could capture, such as gender, birth date, or home address. But we'll leave it at this for now. Let's look at the next table. We'll create one for teachers at Hogwarts, such as Snape, Sprout, or McGonagall. What do we need to know? We'll create an ID field to use as the primary key. We'll also add their first and last name. How about the subject they teach? This is useful, but it's a bit complicated. It can change each year. There could be two teachers with the same subject, and maybe even two subjects for one teacher. Let's create a subject table to store some more information about subjects. We'll create a new table and give it an ID and a subject name. How does this fit into our other tables? It's related to a teacher, but a teacher may have more than one subject, and a subject could have more than one teacher. It also changes over time. This is a many-to-many -many relationship, and it can be represented using a joining table. You can check out my other video here on many-to-many -many relationships to learn more about what they are and why to use them. We add in a joining table here. We'll call it subject teacher for now. We can find a better name for this as we expand the diagram. Now, we mentioned that a teacher has a subject for a particular year. We should capture this year and we can do so in this table. This will allow us to specify, for example, that Professor Quirrell teaches defense against the dark arts in one year but someone else may teach it in another year. Earlier in the video, we specified the house that a student belongs to. This is done in a text field here. What if, when we enter the data, we misspelled a house name? We would have two houses, each with a slightly different name. Or if we removed all students for a house, we would have no information about that house. These problems exist because the house is an entity separate from a student. It has students, it has a house cup winner, it has teachers who are heads of house. This means we should capture it in a separate table and record that a student belongs to a house. Let's do that now. We can add a new table called house. We'll add in an ID for the primary key and a house name. Perhaps we want to add the founder of the house, which is the name of the person who founded it. We'll add this as a first name and last name as that's what we've done in the teacher and student tables. We can also add the primary color, red for Gryffindor, green for Slytherin, and so on. Let's also add the secondary color, which is gold for Gryffindor, black for Hufflepuff, and so on. Now we should link the student to the house. We know that a student belongs to one house and a house has many students. So we put the house ID in the student table as a foreign key. What about teachers? How are they linked to the house? A teacher can be a head of house. However, this may change over time, similar to teachers and subjects. So let's add a joining table with the house ID, the teacher ID, and the year they commenced being the head of house. What about classes? Well, what is a class? We can define it as a subject that is run in a particular year that has a teacher and a collection of students. Looking at our diagram, it matches the join of the subject and teacher table we saw before. We can rename this table to class. How does it relate to student? A student can be in many classes, and a class can have many students. 
So this is another many-to-many -many relationship. We can add a joining table to capture student IDs and class IDs. We already have the year for the class, so we don't need to add that again. Another concept we can capture is the House Cup. This is awarded to the house that achieved the most points for the year. We could capture the points for each house each year, and use a calculation to determine the winner. We add a new table here for house points. We can add an ID, then the house ID, then the year. We have another field for the total number of points for the year. The house cup winner can be calculated based on the house with the most points in the table. Now, you may want to record somewhere who the winner was, as it could help performance in your application, or you feel the historical data may change, or if the winner is based on something other than points. If so, you could create another table that contains years and house cup winners. We won't do that for this example, but that's an option for you. Let's talk about Quidditch, the popular team sport at Hogwarts and the Wizarding World overall. How can we represent it? Let's think about how we can describe Quidditch. Each house has a Quidditch team, made up of seven players on the field. Each player has a different position on the field, such as seeker or beater. Teams play each other during the year, and the overall winner for the year is awarded the Quidditch Cup. This means we'll have a few tables. Let's add these to our diagram now. We have a Quidditch team table, which represents a collection of players who are students for a year. In this Quidditch team table, we have an ID, a house ID to capture which house it's for, and the year the team is for. Each team has many players, which are students. Now, because the Quidditch team table is used to represent a team for a year, a student can be in a team over multiple years, and can therefore be related to many Quidditch team records. This means we have a many-to-many -many relationship. We capture this by adding another many-to-many -many table. We store the student ID, the Quidditch team ID, and we can store the position that the person plays. This could allow us to capture students that change positions in different years. How about the Quidditch captain? Each team has a captain, which is a player and can change each year. How can we record this? We can capture it in our joining table between student and Quidditch team. The actual data stored in here could be a boolean or a number or a text, but this is the place it could go. So this design should cater for players who are in the team for multiple years, players that leave the team, and players that become captain. What about the Quidditch matches that are played? This is a common requirement for sports databases. We have a concept of a match, which is where two teams play each other and have a score at the end of the match. Let's create a table for this. We have an ID for the match record, and we need to capture two Quidditch teams. We add two fields for each team ID. We'll call our fields Team 1 and Team 2. In other databases, you may call it Home Team and Away Team, but as far as I know, all of the Quidditch matches at Hogwarts are played on the same field. We relate both of these columns to the same team ID, which is valid in database designs. We also need to capture the scores. We add two new fields, the Team 1 score and Team 2 score. The winner can be determined by the team with the highest score, so we don't need to capture the winning team here. We can also add a date played for the match, which could be used if we want to display a timeline for a season. Using the information we've captured, we can calculate the match winners, and therefore the standings and the Quidditch Cup winner for each year. We could enhance this to capture things like which player caught the snitch in each match, if it was caught. We can also capture the number of goals scored by each player, which you can go ahead and do if you like. For now, we'll leave those out. We've got quite a decent design coming along. What about other characters in the Hogwarts world and Wizarding world? People like the Weasleys, Dark Wizards, Ministry of Magic staff, and shop owners like Ollivander. We could have a table to capture them, and it depends on why you want to capture them and what you're using the data for. We could have a new table called Person, which would capture the names of these people and the roles they play. If we do this, we may notice we have this new person table, as well as a student table and a teacher table, all of which store information about people. One approach we could take is to combine all of those tables into a person table, and have the relationships to the other tables depending on what role they had. This would cover people who were students who later become teachers, or other characters in the wizarding world. That could work, 
but it could make things more complicated. For this video, we'll leave it the way it is, but you could add a new person table or combine them into multiple tables. Here is the final design of our Harry Potter database. It captures a whole range of concepts, such as students, teachers and classes, Quidditch teams and matches and more. We've got relationships between many tables, and some are even a many-to-many -many relationship. There are many ways we can enhance this, which we've mentioned in this video. You could use your knowledge of Hogwarts and the Wizarding World to enhance it yourself. What else could we add? Spells and spell types, and when you learn them. You could add relationships between people, such as friends, romances, fights and family relationships. You could add a concept of Azkaban prison and capture who was imprisoned there. You could capture people who have passed away. There is a lot more you can add to this, but this is a good foundation for capturing information for Harry Potter and the concepts at Hogwarts. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other database design videos, such as how I would design a social network database for something like Facebook with a lot less users. I've also got a video on database design mistakes that are commonly made, so check that out if you're interested in things to avoid. If you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more videos on database design and SQL. Thanks for watching.